Hi guys, I'm back to continue the first video that we did and where we talked about uh, how to use the UI collection view in displaying a list of items. And what we have on the screen is a two column UI collection view cells, which I um, customized a bit by changing the background color. And we also have a navigation controller and then the uh, product list UI view controller. And in this video, we are going to customize uh, the UI collection view cell by adding a UI image view and a couple of uh, UI labels. All right, let's go ahead and customize the UI collection view. I'm just going to make this uh, UI collection view larger so we can add our sub views. So we are also going to use auto layout to pin the items on the parent view. And I'm going to go to the object library. I'm going to click the plus button and open the object library. And we're going to locate the UI image view. So the UI image view is a view wherein, uh, you, where you can set an image. What we are going to do is load an image from a remote server and then display it in the UI image view. So I'm going to pin this on the left and right side of the uh, content view of our UI view or UI collection view. So this is our content view, which is going to be the parent of the image view. And I'm going to set the auto layout. I'm going to go at the bottom and set the layout for the left and right anchor and set it to zero. And then I'm going to set the, uh, the, the top anchor uh, constraint constant to 16. All right, so we still need to add a few more uh, constraints, which is going to be the height. The height will be 60% um, of the height of the content view. We can do that by pressing the control key and then while the UI image view is selected and then left click and drag to the content view which will open up some options um, for the auto layout. And I'm going to select the equal heights. So it basically means that you're going to get the height uh, from the content view. And we need 60%. So I'm gonna go to the height constraint and it's going to be this one and let me zoom in a bit so zoom and we are going to change the multiplier so the multiplier will determine how many percent it's going to be equal to uh, the other uh, view so let me just change this to 6 0 0.6 which means uh, 60 percent and zoom out now I still have a couple of things to do, which is adding the other two labels, the title and the price. I'm going to open the objects library and then add the label and then set the constraints here. So set the standard constraint for the top anchor, which is going to be eight points and then eight points to left. And then uh, 303 right now, uh, which I'm going to change in a bit. I'm going to change the uh, trailing anchor and zoom out and here I'm going to set to greater than equal and then I'm going to change this to eight points so the width of the label will depend on the amount of text it will have and also the font size and then font type all right and I'm going to also change the font color in the uh, attributes inspector I'm going to change it to darker color and and set the size to 12 or not maybe a black color but then a dark gray color all right so set it to 12 and number of lines should be two for the price i'm going to duplicate this ui label copy and paste change the color to red uh, change it to red red color and then should be just one line all right so I also need to set the uh, auto layout constraints. So it's going to be sa the same for the leading and trailing. And the top should be eight points and then eight points to the left. And same thing 
with the first label I'm going to change the uh, trailing anchor or constraint and I'm going to select that change this to greater than or equal and change the value to 8 okay and for the uh, bottom constraints and let me or the bottom anchor I'm going to change that to perhaps set it to 4 and then add that constraint while I still need to change or make some adjustments instead of equal I'm going to change it to greater than or equal to because there's a possibility that the uh, label height will change if it has um, more text in it which will cause it to multi-line so you will see a couple of lines for the text all right so let's zoom out and see okay we don't have any error the next thing that I need to do is add a subclass of the UI collection view cell by right clicking and then new file and then choose the Coco, Coco touch class and click next I'm not going to uh, change the name and it should be the subclass of UI collection view cell and then the also create sub file is unchecked and I click next and then uh, create all right, so now we have created our UI collection view cell. I need to set this as the uh, class of our UI collection view cell so that uh, we could uh, create IB outlets for that UI collection view cell. It means uh, we are able to uh, reference the UI image view and the other two labels. So select the collection view cell and then in the identity inspector, to set the subclass, I'm just going to paste it here in the class uh, class field, and then I, I am now able to create the IB outlets for the image view, the title label, and then the price label. So I'm going to press the option key and then select the uh, collection view cell. So I have uh, the storyboard and then the subclass open, and let me just uh, close this and. Now I'm going to select the image, our UI image view, and then control and then drag it in the uh, class and set the name uh, image view. I'll be doing the same with the uh, title label. Control key and then drag and then call it title uh, label. And then for the price, which is going to be price label price label okay so later I can access these uh, views so that I could set it with some uh, UI values such as the text and let me just zoom out okay so I think we're good here I just need to close this and then open the uh, navigator all right, and let me open the view controller so that I could set the custom uh, subclass as the class that we are using in our cell, which is uh, within the collection view data source delegate. We have the cell for item index path where we get the instance of the UI collection view cell, and we know that it is a subclass of the collection view cell. Then I'm going to cast it as as the collection view cell since we are uh, we are setting it to the collection view cell subclass we, we now can access the three uh, sub views and I'm going to verify that it's working by accessing the text the title label and then setting some text some text and then for the uh, price uh, label I'm going to set a dummy price dollar sign 100 dot zero all right so I think uh, that looks good and let me test that it, if it's working and displaying our dummy text Okay, so our uh, dummy texts are now being displayed on the uh, two labels or UI labels that we have set. We currently do not have an image. 
but then uh, at a later time I'll show you how we can uh, set it up to load an image from a remote server and then set it in our image view. Before we would display images on our UI collection view cells, I need to introduce uh, a class which is going to represent the, uh, the data that's going to be used in our UI collection view cells. So I'm going to uh, create another class. We're going to call this the uh, product. Uh, it's a struct which is going to represent uh, the uh, product that we're going to fetch from the remote server. So I'm going to create a new file which is going to be a struct. So I'm going to select uh, Swift and then click Next to create the, the file and then uh, change the name to product and then create. So it's going to be a struct instead of a class and then the name would be product. So I'm going to set the uh, set three properties representing uh, the the data that we need. First is the uh, the title. So let title be a string, and then let um, the price, which is going to be string as well. And then for the uh, for the image, which is going to be the I URL of the image. So let it would be the image. URL and then it's going to be a string. All right, so now we have our uh, product struct which will represent an object of a product and we will be using this in our view controller and I'm going to set this in an array which will be used by the uh, collection view. I need to create another private property here. It's going to be the uh, products array. So we'll be creating an array which is of a product and we will initialize it with an instance of the uh, uh, product array which, are, which is going to be empty. While uh, for demonstration we are going to add a product item and then we are going to set it in the array. So let me just create a product, an example product which is going to be the product here and then set our uh, dummy data. So the title would be some title here and then the price would be some dummy price 99.99 and our image URL would be a, a, a URL for a, an image that's served on a remote uh, server. So let me just uh, paste that example here all right, so we already have a product object. Now what we need to do is add it in the uh, products array. So products, uh, products, products. So where's our products array? Products. Okay. Um, so we already have, okay, let me just change this products. And then we can append uh, that new element which is the product and then we are going to use the products array in our number of items in section and we need to get the count so it will represent the number of items that we would want to display and we added one item so it should be displaying one item I also need to update the cell for item at index path uh, we are not going to use this anymore. Let me just remove that because later we'll be setting the uh, product whenever the sulfur item at index path will be getting one of the product instance from this array and we need to make some adjustments in our collection view cell. I'm going to head over to the collection view cell and then we are going to create the uh, product variable of the uh, product type and then we are going to use the uh, did set uh, property observer. It means that once the val a value is set to this variable, then this this block will be called. And then Xcode is is uh, complaining because uh, collection view cell has no initializers. I'm just going to uh, add a uh, or unwrap 
this uh, property and then uh, we are going to set the text for the price label and then the title label price label then text we're going to use the product variable and then use the uh, price and for the uh, title title text and then use the product variable and then use the title and for the image we need to use another library so that we could asynchronously download that image file into the app and then display it in the image view so I need to uh, use the uh, library called Kingfisher alright so we are going to use a uh, Swift package this uh, library is hosted on github I just need to add uh, the URL of that repository so I just need to paste the uh, repository of the Kingfisher library and then I'm going to click next and then it's verifying and authenticating and we also have the option to select which version we're going to use I'm going to click next and then we will have uh, the option to select which uh, version of the uh, uh, library we're going to use we only have one and then make sure we are setting the correct target since we only have one target which is the collection view tutorial I'm going to click finish now we can use uh, Kingfisher in our uh, collection view cell so I'm going to import it I'm going to import uh, Kingfisher and uh, use it in the image view. So using the uh, Kingfisher to load a remote image, there are you know different ways of doing that. Uh, while I'm going to use the simpler one uh, in this example. So I'm going to reference reference the image view, image view, and then that KF so it's sort of an extension and referring to the uh, uh, Kingfisher instance and then we can set the image uh, and set the uh, URL of that image while we uh, need to set the image uh, we also need to you know set the URL object so let me uh, do that here um, let URL and then equals create a URL object and then pass a string URL which is going which is going to be coming from the uh, product object uh, image URL URL would be optional uh, so it's possible that it is going to return nil so we can make sure that it is not nil by using a guard statement I am going to add guard in front of it and then else at the end and then if there's nothing there then return otherwise use the URL in our uh, set image method so now we already use Kingfisher so that we could load the image in this uh, remote URL and it will be set in our image uh, image view asynchronously and uh, as a bonus the file uh, the image file will be loaded or cached in the app so by the time it's needed again the app will, will not need to uh, load the image again we will be using the cached image in instead now that we already set that up where I'm gonna go back to the view controller so we can set the uh, product uh, instance into the UI collection view cell so cell and then that product and then we will get the specific product uh, for this index path or for this row and then I'm going to use the products array okay the products products okay and then uh, using the index path row we only have one we only have one section so I don't need to uh, to locate that using the section alright so it will fetch the correct uh, product object for us and set it in the cells product uh, variable which will eventually set the uh, the values to our uh, sub views and let me just make sure this is correct okay this looks good and then in our view controller I have an example here and then 
Uh, it says can it use mutating uh, let me go back it says can it mutating and then uh, let me check what it's saying value spark is a let constant okay so yes since I'm making changes in the array I need to make sure it's a variable as opposed to a constant using the let keyword and fix all right, so there you go, it's fixed. And let me run this app to test if it's working. In the succeeding videos, I'll show you how you could uh, download uh, JSON data from a remote server and then display uh, the uh, JSON data or product information in the UI collection view cells. Okay, so right now we have managed to display the image and our sample title and then price in our UI collection view cells which uh, which means that uh, what we've done is working uh, customizing the UI collection view cells we have created a product uh, struct which will wrap the uh, product information so that we could display it in our UI collection view cell there's one thing I would want to do I would like to remove the green background. I'm going to head over back to the storyboard and then change the background of our UI collection view cell in the attributes inspector. Change this to, uh, to the default uh, color. And then I'm going to add more example product information or product in our array. So let me just repeat the uh, our duplicate the instance in the array and I'm going to press the command key and then R to run the application so we can verify that it is displaying the two uh, product objects in our UI collection view cell alright so now it's uh, correctly displaying our products in the UI collection view cell so on uh, the next video that I'm going to prepare, I'll be talking about how to do networking and fetching data from a remote server, transforming uh, JSON data into an object that would be useful or usable in the app, and then using it in our UI collection view.